Let's take a look at everything new in the first beta of iOS 13.1. What's up everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and we spent last night installing iOS 13.1, the first beta. That's right, this is not iOS 13, this is iOS 13.1. Apple kind of surprised us and threw us a curveball by releasing the first point beta of iOS 13 before iOS 13 was even released. So iOS 13 is just around the corner, but it seems it's feature complete, and we're missing a few things that Apple promised with that update. So some of those missing features have returned in iOS 13.1. So we're gonna walk through first the returned features that we were missing in iOS 13, and then we're gonna walk through all the other small features, changes, and tweaks that we happen to find this time around. Let's go ahead and dive in with what has returned that was missing and expected with iOS 13. First is the automation tab of the Shortcuts app. This app, which sits prominently in the center, allows users to create automations for their devices. So these are HomeKit devices that they have around their house. For instance, in a previous video, we showed you how to enable scenes, lights, and accessories using NFC tags. So you could just place these cheap, tiny little NFC tags around your home, tap it with your phone, and you would turn on a light or set an alarm, whatever it might be. So that whole tab has returned with the iOS 13.1 first beta. The second feature we saw return is sharing ETAs in Maps. Not only that, but it got a new detail view when you're on that receiving end. So if you're going somewhere, you have a location in, you wanna share your uh, location and your ETA with someone, you can do that and they can see your progress along the way. Very similar to Waze, but Apple just baked it right into the OS itself. Real quick, I also wanted to point out that we're still missing some features that Apple promised, such as announce messages on AirPods that's still not here even though other features have returned. So we'll see if that comes out in a subsequent beta of 13.1. Moving on, let's check out all the other features, changes, and tweaks that we saw this time around. Starting out with the Home app, there are new icons for lights, fans, and plugs. Starting out with lights, there are a ton of new ones here. So ceiling fixtures, chandeliers, light strips are going to be a popular one. All those have been added inside of this beta. So now when you're looking at your lights, they don't all show up as just light bulbs because that's not gonna be accurate to your house. So it's a little bit more usable and easier to tell what you're looking at. So plenty of new icons. There are six new ones for lights. Plugs have a bunch of new styles. So instead of just the standard US outlet, there are now ones for European markets. So you can actually change the outlet on your plug to match where you're actually using it at. And lastly, for fans, there's a new tall floor standing fan icon, aside from just the table one and the ceiling fan. So it's more representative of different fan types. Now, also on those, we have a new animation that happens. Whenever you turn on a lighter accessory, you'll notice some little small tweaks there. Something Apple really is the only one that's going to do and probably one of the few that's gonna notice it. But when you turn on a light, it just has a nice little glow that kind of comes out. Some of them have a little bit of a swinging effect as you turn them on. So really small, subtle animations that were added there. iOS 13 brings us that new volume HUD on the side. So it has a much more slim look, but with iOS 13.1, the device that you're connected to will now show at the bottom. So if you're connected to AirPods, you'll see an AirPods glyph there. Same thing for PowerBeats, other Beats headphones, and even HomePod. So it just gives you a little bit more feedback in what you're actually looking at. Looking at Apple's widgets, we have two things to talk about there. First, the weather widget has been updated with slightly larger glyphs that has been updated. And the battery widget now will show a proper icon or glyph for PS4 and Xbox controllers. Support for those was added with iOS 13. Now when those are connected, those will show in the battery widget and they will have the proper icon attributed to it. Speaking of battery, whenever you use that quick action on the setting icon with 3D touch uh, or haptic touch, you'll notice the battery icon there is now all the way full. Previously it was not a full battery, small change. The battery now on that quick action glyph is changed. Apple has updated dynamic wallpapers. Previously we saw the colorful backgrounds switch to black backgrounds. Now in 13.1, all of them are back. We have the colorful backgrounds and the black backgrounds and they're available on more devices than ever. Beta apps and those that were installed through TestFlight now have little orange yellow indicator dots next to them. In the watch app for iPhone, Nike Plus Run Club has been renamed to just Nike Run Club. Brightness and Tech Science was also renamed to Display and Brightness in this new beta. If you go to Settings, General, and Fonts, 
there's some new text that will inform users if they have no fonts installed and that they can download fonts from the App Store. Also, while we're in settings, there's a new toggle to include reading PDFs as part of iOS 13's reading goal. When you airdrop, airdrop devices have a new device icon instead of just the owner's profile picture. So I'm going to drop to my iPad instead of just seeing my picture there and iPad Pro underneath, it'll actually show the glyph or the image of an iPad Pro. Inside of Maps, whenever we're deleting a collection, a new modal will appear to confirm that deletion before actually carrying it out. Personal hotspot settings say new family sharing icon. And we were also noted on Twitter that there is an additional enhancement to mouse support. Now, right clicks can be mapped to the long press slash 3D touch effect of iOS. We also saw in the release notes that they've added HEVC video coding that adds alpha channels, which lends itself greatly to green screen style chroma key effects. So wow, that is that is kind of a lot of changes here, but this is the first beta of iOS 13.1, so we have returning things, we have new things, a ton of bug fixes going through. I will say this is a little bit buggier than the last beta of iOS 13. We've been running iOS 13 for a while now, and it's been very solid. So even though those features were removed, it was a very solid build with 13.1. It's a little bit more buggy. Things are a little bit slower. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But for right now, this is where we're at. It looks like iOS 13 is pretty much done, ready to ship. And some of those features are just not gonna make it. They're going to be included in 13.1. So don't fret too long. They should just be around the corner. And uh, if you find anything else at all, let me know on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU, and I'll make sure to update the article that is linked above in the description and we'll give you credit. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.